in the second hour i'm joined by two gentlemen we will discuss matters politics uh, and on my immediate left we have alenga uh, i told you about this name eh? yeah, Torostad. Toro, Torostad. yes it's german yeah okay <laughs> you'll tell us about that name and uh, of course uh, always a pleasure having you dr churchill sao okay who pleasure. is uh, also a political commentator and also a lecturer at the jomo kenyatta university of agriculture science and technology welcome gentlemen thank you thank you perhaps to start with you churchill are we more divided now than we were when we were going to the polls in the year 2017 based on what we are having in politics now or have uh, we been able at least to, to be a little bit more cohesive? Well, the, the question of cohesion, you know, it's, it's, uh, we cannot really say the relativity comparison to the 2017 scenario mm. because uh, as expected, the country will always be divided along uh, political, political inclinations. Mm. And I think maybe what might be of interest for us is as to the polarity the extent of the polarities of, uh, of of the different communities where they are living uh, of course uh, as was in 2017 politicians will always take advantage of of wanting to wipe emotions of people mm -hmm. to to get votes i mean this, this these are things that have been expected of course we're already beginning to see that we're already beginning to see that now so the divisions is it, i think the divisions that we are seeing is not something new Mm -hmm. It's not something new in our political. Uh, in the our severity political, is, will make the difference. Well, the severity will make the difference, and in 2017, mm -hmm. I will sort of say that the considering that the there was a government that was coming into place, mm -hmm. the, the, and there was already a specific voting bloc that was existing, mm -hmm. and so you know the president of Uru Kenyatta and the deputy president were seeking. Uh, a second term mm. so sort of their voting block was already was already intact mm. and so they only needed to ensure that they hold that election that that electoral block mm. so the the idea about creating emotions to get new voters by you know creating division really really was not there until after the elections mm -hmm. where now people began fighting. So for me, I think that it is still too early to think that we are too divided. Mm -hmm. It is, uh, we can, all we can confirm is that politicians are, uh, some of the politicians are already beginning to raise war drums mm -hmm. for their own uh, selfish gains from across the political divide. Mm -hmm. Alanga, three legislators are already on the radar of NCIC, DCI, yeah, and the courts as well, because <coughs> we have one who has be already been charged, uh, who uh, uh, was not charged, but was, uh, was arraigned in court. That is uh, Meru Senator M Mithika Linturi. Looking at uh, that, it's only 12 days, and the, the IEBC has not even announced that uh, the, the, the campaigns have officially started. <coughs> Uh, what do you read in, the, in, in, in this politics? Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity to be on your show once again. You're welcome. Um, to begin with, uh, I would like to say that the problem with this country is that we, we as the people of Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, think episodically. There are things that um, mean a lot to us during a certain period. And once that is gone, then we forget and we just get back as small children and we start doing the same, same things that build up to uh, violence. Mm -hmm. If you look at the situation in 2007, it began uh, with very dismal um, uh, uh, undertones and they were building up slowly by slowly. Mm -hmm. There was that uh, progressive um, preparation of minds that mm -hmm. the election win might go a certain direction mm -hmm. and then people were prepared towards uh, that direction and everything they were doing was uh, in preparing how they will receive that news and how they will combat it. And then uh, we could be able to see uh, certain leaders stand on the podium and issue certain statements and these statements are very powerful because the people down there listen to their leaders 
And when these leaders take the podium and speak those things, mm -hmm. they don't just go into, they don't just vanish in the air. Mm -hmm. They have a, 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 um, an effect they have and an impact they have on, this, on the people who listen to them. So um, if we are a nation that learns from history, then if we look back to 2007 and how it uh, built up, mm -hmm. we should be able to tell ourselves now it's time we chart a different direction. Um, back to the issues of NCIC, mm. that may not be a really big concern, but the big concern is, is action being going to be taken against yes. these legislators? Mm -hmm. Action that can deter other people from doing the same, same things they are doing. But as we know, and as history informs us in this country, um, justice is for the rich and the law is for the poor. Mm -hmm. So you will definitely see those politicians flanked by very uh, expensive lawyers mm -hmm. and uh, other leaders who will be in support of what they said and then will be two, three days that issue will go. Mm -hmm. And then that does not stop other people from coming forth and mm -hmm. spewing hate mm -hmm. and changing the mentality of Kenyans. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, our politics have this intrinsic binary aspect like every time we, we are approaching the general election we are looking at it as a binary formation of this side against this side mm -hmm. today you you're hearing um, a lot of the hustler uh, proclamations mm -hmm. and then other people have already been divided as those who have or the dynasties or that but then the fundamental question is these uh, Kenyans who are out here and support uh, 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 maybe the, they support the the bid for uh, Deputy President uh, 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 William Ruto. Mm -hmm. Are they necessarily hustlers? And then those who support maybe uh, Honorable Raila Odinga, mm -hmm. are they necessarily dynasties? Mm -hmm. These are just Kenyans mm -hmm. who like this particular leader yes. and they resonate with what he's saying. These others just like this other leader and they resonate what the, he's saying. So if we can reach, arrive at that point where we, we begin looking at our politics in terms of ideology and persuasion, mm -hmm. then we will be able to vacate uh, this position, this current position of um, ethnic mobilization, uh, this, the feeling of victimization, and the preparation to, uh, to react in mm -hmm. the event the election does not go our way. Mm -hmm. And uh, Churchill, looking at uh, flashing back in 2007, uh, technology and social media was not as advanced as it is, and you saw the damage that we were able to do to this country as Kenyans ourselves. Because we, did, we, were, we were not in war with, the, with any other country. We were just ourselves. And looking at the social media now, it's quite robust and it's being misused, so to speak. Because looking at those clips, the moment that he talked about, uh, whatever he talked about, uh, a good example, the senator and, um, and uh, Onyonka, the, the clips circulate within minutes mm. everywhere. Mm. Is that a red zone? <laughs> the social media. Because we wouldn't want the government to control our social media as it has happened in our neighboring countries. Mm -hmm. Case in point is Uganda. Um, absolutely. I think this is, this is, for me, I look at it as a positive thing. Mm -hmm. as, as a free society and an open society. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, what would have been the, 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 the opposite? And what would be the impact of the opposite? Mm -hmm. The impact of the opposite would be that these incitements are done at closed doors and operatives happen at closed doors and people suffer at closed doors and we have mass murders as close at closed doors without them coming into the public glamour. Mm -hmm. But now when you look at the robustness of the media and the robustness of the social media, mm -hmm. it has sort of created a scenario where the power, not only really the powers that be, but the, the institutions and the agencies that are responsible for holding the, you know, this, the, 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 the national cohesion and the security agencies, they have now been put to task to take action against some of these people. So I think that it is something positive that Kenyans are becoming more vigilant mm -hmm. in ensuring that they are doing a job that should have been done by somebody in government. Mm -hmm. And so the government agencies sort of are now moving and following 
what the people of Kenya expect them to do. And I think this is the main purpose of having a strong civil society uh, organization mm -hmm. that is able to not only, not only keep government in check, but also complement government work in ensuring that, 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 that the country is at peace. You know, for example, I'm just thinking that, you know, NCIC might not maybe have the capacity to go everywhere and monitor every speeches that people make. Mm. But through some of these media platforms, they are able to get what is happening across the country, in all corners of the country, mm -hmm. and take action against some of these people. So I think for me, it is in as much as on the opposite hand, it flames up the it flames up the, the, you know, what, for example, Senator said, mm -hmm. but on the other hand, it actually brings it, brings it open and onto the fore so that action can be taken. Uh -huh. mm. Alenga, looking at uh, the political party's amendment bill, fiasco in uh, the, the National Assembly, and uh, of course we're waiting for the Senate to make a determination on the same, but we saw clear divisions the political party's amendment bill, when it becomes an act, it will help Kenyans post 2022 election. It will also govern 2027, it will govern for the, the, the rest of the elections. But looking at even the way those MPs were voting, it clearly shows there is a division uh, based on the 2022 succession politics. Is that objectivity in, in, in the part of our leaders? Because this is something that is going to help them even when they are not there, even when our kids are MPs. But when they were voting, we saw a sharp division that is based on the 2022 succession, succession politics alone. It, it's a terrible place to find ourselves as a country because uh, we have a parliament that clearly is sectarian and then therefore does not even serve the interest of the common man. So what we have as a parliament is a, uh, is a parliament that serves the interests of, the, of, of uh, what, the, what they call their, their principal leaders. Uh, so for instance, you have that division in the, in the parliament between those MPs that are allied to uh, the deputy president and mm -hmm. those that are in support of the president. Mm -hmm. But ironic, interestingly, mm -hmm. uh, that is actually supposed to be one government. Mm -hmm. You even have a further interesting bit where you have a deputy president who is already having his own party mm -hmm. and then somehow still belonging to the ruling party mm -hmm. and somehow still holding the position of uh, deputy president. Yes. So we do not have that um, political morality mm -hmm. of saying, well, if I, if I have uh, found my own outfit and I have gone full blast to seek for the, president of the, the presidency of the Republic of Kenya, I cannot do that while, uh, while being an active deputy president to a running presidency. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as a matter of morality, maybe um, there should have been a resignation. But then we know this is not the place where such resignations happen. Um, somebody would rather die. But then, mm -hmm. when we look at um, the, 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 the debate in the parliament, uh, in, in as much as the, 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 the amendment to the political act is concerned, I have been interrogating this point, that at no point have the uh, antagonists said this is the particular part of the bill that we are not comfortable with. Mm -hmm. When they come forth and tell you that the register of political parties is going to have immense power, is going to police political parties, but when you go to the bill and read it one by one, you, un you understand that on the only thing that the register of political parties will do will ratify the decisions that have been made by the political formations. Mm -hmm. So where is the problem in uh, you making your, uh, your, your deliberations as a political party mm -hmm. and then you take these deliberations or what you have agreed to the register of political parties who in turn uh, ratifies the decision you have made. The, that bill also uh, takes away the, 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 that 
power of political uh, uh, party leaders just kicking out members from the party because mm -hmm. maybe they don't want you or they have disagreed ab about something something uh, ideologically or personally. Mm -hmm. So it puts there a framework within yes. which you can be able to, um, to, to, to be kicked out of a party. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there's also the aspect of uh, party lists. Mm -hmm. We have seen in political parties in this country, there are people who work hard for political parties. There are people who truly deserve nomination slots. But when, that, when the time for nominations comes, people even uh, people nominate their girlfriends and concubines and, and mm -hmm. close friends and relatives. Mm -hmm. So if we have a framework mm -hmm. that, uh, that ensures that uh, proper nominations will be done no. in order to give us uh, quality in mm -hmm. the National Assembly, mm -hmm. what is the problem with that? But what we should be deeply indicting mm -hmm. in our conversations okay. is the model through which we elect these leaders. Mm -hmm. And that is what uh, the bill tries to cure in the in the sense of uh, uh, you know the, the issue about coalition building okay. because we have had coalitions in this country where mm -hmm. people basically gang up to go into power uh -huh. so when they get into power then they now start figuring out mm -hmm. what is required of me as a leader I have been elected as the MP for this constituency okay. but then what is required of me they start now figuring out on the job okay. but then now if you give a, a framework for uh, a coalition building which gives adequate time for somebody to really join a coalition because mm -hmm. they are convicted and convicted to oh. the cause of that coalition. Okay. Hold and the thought. Helps. And uh, Churchill, you're going to add on that. Eh? Yeah. In case you just joined us, uh, we are talking about matters politics. And before we crossed over to Eastleigh, uh, my panel and I here, we were talking about uh, how we have seen uh, uh, some divisions when it came to the uh, political parties amendment bill uh, signaling that we have clear 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 uh, divisions on where people are laying their allegiance bearing in mind that uh, they are talking about something that is gonna help Kenyans even in other political years or election years and uh, Churchill uh, you were to chip in with that uh, the divisions that we have seen uh, sharply something that is going to help the whole country and uh, looking at uh, what even the dp and his brigade um, uh, 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 are talking about and uh, the azimio they are on their side and to me i'm not comfortable with that as a kenyan because if we are talking about matters national we should be objective as leaders yeah, you know, this is, this is something that has happened before, and I think as my colleague Alenga mentioned, <coughs> the greatest challenge that we have in Kenya is the bipolarism of our politics, and especially when it takes the dual, duality in terms of, you know, you have two peripheries of uh, political thinking at mm -hmm. any given time. And we end up with scenarios where uh, people do not make decisions objectively, as you say. Mm -hmm. And we counter something because somebody stands for it. Mm -hmm. Even if we know deep within ourselves that it's good for us. If my people don't want uh, Ben, then anything that Ben stands for, we will oppose it. Even if it will help mm -hmm. us in the future. Yes. And so in the long run, we end up making decisions that are extremely subjective, and are extremely short-lived and this has made help made us make quite some bad choices mm -hmm. with the leadership and mm -hmm. bad choices in terms of even selection of even certain key decisions mm -hmm. at the national level mm -hmm. and it's, it's something that is quite unfortunate because you end up realizing that you know we will really have to be amending laws over and over our time because we have to fit these laws to, f to, we have to make these laws to fit specific short-term interests. So we don't make laws for posterity. The amendments, the miscellaneous amendments will always come every now and then because we want to make them to fit specific interests at that time. And even at that time, the divisions will always follow. The, they will always follow the duality of politics at that particular time. Mm -hmm. So it's something that is extremely unfortunate. And as Alenga has mentioned, it is, there is a no ideology that really surrounds this. When you look at the advanced democracies, mm -hmm. you will see that every decision that is made in the legislature or even in the executive 
is defined by the ideology that defined those political formations. Mm -hmm. So you do not just wake up and make a decision uh -huh. because you know we have we have a personality who is a political leader of party X and and, and is is opposing somebody who is a party leader of, pol or, of political party Y. Mm -hmm. And that is that is extremely short term. It is it is it is simplistic and it is very dangerous for our country and you know we 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 have seen this before even when you looked at those who opposed and you know and proposed the new constitution you know the the, the all these were based on who mm. was for it and who was against it which is really quite simplistic and very unfortunate for a country yeah. uh -huh. uh, ibc did announce that uh, there will be <coughs> the nominations <coughs> Excuse me. They announced in April the, the party nominations. They're expecting the party nominations in uh, uh, April. Uh, will that really be the tiebreaker? Because there are a lot of uh, 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 people ascribing to a certain political formation, but they will not get the ticket. See? And uh, that might, they might, we've seen it in 2017, talking about I was wigged out, uh, I, was, I was told I was going to be given the ticket, now I'm going independent or I'm going to another form, political formation. Are we likely to see the same? Like, right now as we speak, we have just two divisions, two big divisions, major di di divisions as we talk. The greatest challenge that might happen is that maybe the time frame, and I think that, you know, the bill was trying to, uh, to avoid scenarios where people fail nominations mm -hmm. in any political party and yes. then go into independent be an independent candidate so it mm -hmm. might be quite a tricky balance for them mm -hmm. and you know if you are going f as an independent candidate that is something that you should have made up your mind up front mm -hmm. and I think that is an extremely objective thing because mm -hmm. if I'm an independent candidate mm -hmm. it means that the formations that exist I don't <coughs> believe in the ideologies so that is something that should have been, it's something that you should have made up your mind from the onset, even, you know, way, yes. way, way, yes. way behind. Mm -hmm. it, it's not about, it was, and, and the, the whole concept of independent candidates, even in the advanced democracies like the U.S., it's not about that, you know, you failed in, you failed as a Democrat and you can't be in a Republican, so you go as an independent. No, mm -hmm. it is because you don't believe in the ideals Mm -hmm. of, a de of being a Democrat. Yes. Neither do you believe in being in the ideals of a Republican. Mm -hmm. So you stand as an independent candidate because you have your own political ideals that you, will, that you want to stand for. Mm -hmm. So that's something that should come from the fall, yes. way fall before even the nominations mm -hmm. happen. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, Alenga, do you think that uh, curbing political hoping could be the game changer in uh, formation of those uh, political formations because as we as we speak we are likely to see more formations as we gear up to the 2022 succession politics i think to a great extent it does mm -hmm. because um uh you 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 you'll actually see how it happens uh, with the previous with the previous setups mm -hmm. people were just basically running here and there you know, you, you, you miss a, a nomination slot, you jump to the other side, mm -hmm. you disagree with a party leader, you jump to another side. So at this point, we, 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 we sort of will come to a place where you are in party X because you truly believe in the ideals of party X. Mm -hmm. if, you do, if you miss the nomination for party X, then you're not going to jump to party Y, but you will stay there and wait for another time. So that way, uh, it helps us have legitimate members of a party. Mm -hmm. And that is why the mm -hmm. bill is introducing what it calls the corporate membership. Mm -hmm. That you can actually be a, a, a member of a, of a party, uh, even if, you're, uh, if you are in a coalition, you are still a member of your own party. You know? So it's not really just a matter of, yeah, let's come together. Beca because what it has come out to look like is, let's come together to prevent so and so from also getting it, from getting into power so then when you get into power on that flimsy uh, foundation then you're given the country to lead then you start now figuring out what do i do you know that is like uh, you you get into the same predicament that the the first government after independence found itself in mm -hmm. because they were fighting for parochial interests mm -hmm. our land our culture or what then now mm -hmm. you're given the whole country to lead yeah. then you start figuring out 
what do I do with Matsabit? Mm. What do I do with Malava? You know, mm. because you, you, your dream is not as big as it is. But if we, we, are, we come to that place where political parties are now I, ideology founded, then it gives you a commitment to that cause to all through to the end. But we are, what we are having is just a game. And that is why it um, eventually it leads us to a point where we have uh, what, what I always call round pegs and square holes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it cannot work. So we, we actually need that kind of sanity mm -hmm. to give us the best leaders. And that's why I was referring to the model that we use to select mm -hmm. our leaders. It's Matters. a model of just let's, let's come together, mm -hmm. let's pull so-and-so from Okambani, let's pull so-and-so from, uh, from Western, let's pull so-and-so so from, from, um, from cost. If we do so, then we will prevent so-and-so and so-and-so and so from getting into leadership. Mm -hmm. It has to be bigger than that. Mm -hmm. uh, Churchill, let's uh, revisit a voter registration exercise. IBC announced that this month month we will be they will be conducting that and we saw uh, the voter apathy that we experienced in uh, November they didn't even hit 30 percent of war of the target that they uh, they had um, they had pegged on the voters uh, to register what is the game changer here because looking at undecided Kenyans every time even when uh, opinion polls are held it's a big big number and a lot of Kenyans still as we speak have not registered mm. what perhaps can IBC do because uh, just opening uh, a polling station and somebody staying there for the whole day and only to get one or two people something needs to give so that we may enter the 2022 succession politics we may go to our polls very well as a, as a one cohesive Kenya and get the leaders that we want as opposed to sitting back and saying ah. I, I think that in this um, in this registration exercise there will be need for a broader engagement beyond IBC because actually some, some talked about uh, voter voter education a lot of people talked about the IBC didn't conduct voter civic education well the, the voter education I mean this is part and parcel of mm -hmm. what they could be able to do mm -hmm. and not necessarily to get the hundred percent but to get some other additional percentage and I would look at it in terms of the not really education but the sensitization mm -hmm. that you know the an election is coming you need to elect your leader you need uh, you need a voting card and the political leaders will also have to do some more work to use their political party structures to help in building marshalling their support bases mm. to to register as voters that is what i really expect mm. I expect them to really work extremely hard to mobilize grassroots members to get into to register as voters mm. and perhaps the the, the 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 engagement of other civil society actors like the churches he, and the the mosques you know would also be something that would be good maybe you know the the help in the mobilization mm. of people to go out and vote and maybe even having some of those centers being within within the within those the religious centers would be something that would help because you know these are people who you know the religious leaders are people who Kenyans listen to they mm. you know they listen to them on any almost everything apart from which political leader to 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 elect <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so at least <laughs> and it's true actually <laughs> because uh, you, you <laughs> uh, we have even seen the the, the party defections yes where somebody is not quite sure where where to stand yeah. and uh, of course uh, some of the parties like ANC has uh, has witnessed the same as well yes yeah, yeah. you think uh, the party defections and uh, alignments okay they will decide they they have a meeting where they will sit down and talk about who we will be our flag flag bearer do you think that will change the 2022 succession matrix <laughs> And uh, the defections that we are witnessing uh, we had an MP uh, yesterday talk about now I'm, I'm, I'm crossing over to this side and we are seeing them each and every day and uh, Paul, the, 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 actually the campaigns are yet to be officially announced yes I, I think before I can um, comment about Oka, mm. I would just want to slightly differ with Dr. on uh, what he thinks about uh, IBC and how they can they can optimize on the number of uh, new registrations mm -hmm. and all that. I think you see, it, it, IEBC's issue is really a matter of audit because you need to arrive at a place where you can ask yourself, 
If we give this agency, let's say, about 10 billion, mm -hmm. and then they register 26,000 people, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a question uh -huh. of audit. Uh -huh. What did you really do with that 10 billion, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they need to come back to the table and tell us, you know, mm -hmm. this is... And then number two, uh, I think it's not really about sensitization because mm -hmm. every person in, 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 the, in the country knows that there is election uh, registration. Mm -hmm. When the uh, registration begins, everybody knows. Mm -hmm. They can even see IEBC people sitting somewhere on shops and whatever mm -hmm. they know that mm -hmm. but now the problem is the methodology you know if IABC can work around a flexible way of registering voters fresh voters mm -hmm. other than uh, having somebody to look for where an IABC agent is sitting and then they can now be able to be registered there mm -hmm. I think they will be able to reap as many people uh, if uh, this is the year 2022 mm -hmm. and we have completely refused to embrace IECT mm -hmm. even in terms of registration then where are we headed to um, you look at uh, when when we when we had the BBI uh, issue mm -hmm. uh, signatures were gathered electronically and the same signatures would be taken to IEBC and IEBC verified so what stops IEBC from giving us a portal where you can actually enter and register yourself as a voter because primarily when when you step out to vote on the voting day, then you will support yourself with uh, physical documents that show you are actually that registered voter. Mm -hmm. I think we need to, to start thinking out, outside the box mm -hmm. and stop using um, old maps to go to new lands. Mm -hmm. Because that is how people are registered in 1965. Yes. That is mm -hmm. how people are registered in 1992, mm -hmm. in 83, in 97. So nothing is changing, but, but IEBC is sitting and waiting for different results. Mm -hmm. then th so th th that is what I think about um, um, optimizing on the fresh registrations okay. um, then when you come back to one Kenya Alliance mm -hmm. and whether they stand as a, a chance to change mm -hmm. anything in the political uh, situation it is highly unlikely because as we're looking at this race it is uh, ev each and every day it continues to shape itself as a two-horse race mm -hmm. And, uh, I and think Parliament has shown that. Yes, mm. indeed. And I think earlier in the day, um, the, the, the One Kenya Alliance felt, what I think, they felt like um, they might be able to bring um, a situation where no leader gets 50 plus one. And then now at that point, they can now negotiate with the person who is having a lot of weight in that vote. And I think that was a wrong strategy because you don't strategize mm -hmm. to lose. You know, you, know you, you look at this situation where uh, Raila Odinga is strategizing to win the election. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, Dep De Deputy President is strategizing to win the election. And then you decide, the four of you will strategize how to bring uh, a runoff, mm -hmm. you know. It's, it, you know, it's not really going to happen like that. But if you look at the political capital of those leaders that form One Kenya Alliance individually, Musalia Mdavadi has attempted uh, to go to the ballot, and mm -hmm. we know how many votes he got. They were less than half a million. Mm -hmm. Even the, ho the whole of Western could not, could not be galvanized behind him. Yes. You know. So what magic is he going to perform mm -hmm. in, in 2022? Uh, Kalonzo Musioka tried the same same year mm -hmm. and he got about 876,000 votes. Mm -hmm. Those are very negligible numbers that cannot really cause a difference in the election. Okay. If you look at uh, Gideon mm -hmm. Moy, yes. he has never been on the presidential ballot, so mm -hmm. we do not know how much he can get. Mm -hmm. If you look at uh, Wetangula, he has never been on the presidential ballot, so we don't even know how much he can get. Mm -hmm. But if you look at uh, the geopolitics, especially in the regions where these leaders come from, mm -hmm. if, you, if you're looking at Gideon Moy and he's mm -hmm. coming from um, uh, Rift Valley, mm -hmm. then you see the biggest chunk has already been, been has already left the station okay. with the deputy president. So okay. what much is he going to uh, get from, from Rift Valley? If you go to Western Kenya, uh -huh. most of the governors in Western Kenya uh -huh. are ODM governors. Uh -huh. If you go to Wetangula's yeah. home staff, okay. it's really nothing much. In the interest much. of time, eh? uh, in one minute, I see, um, you, we've seen interior peers, Karanja Kibicho, they're uh, inspecting uh, leading other PSS in inspecting government projects and we know very well a lot of government officials are plunging into politics and some people are worried that uh, that might affect government. Do you think you're a governance expert? Do you think that might affect uh, Kenyatta's government before he not, leaves? Not at all. Mm -hmm. Not at all. I mean government is a system. 
-hmm. and the exit of some of these top leaders will not necessarily crunch bring the government into into a halt mm -hmm. i mean you when this has happened before and uh, mm -hmm. you know the government has a way in which they are able to mm -hmm. to have their systems continue so we don't really expect that no. and of course immediately Immediately, some of them resign. Mm. Others will be nominated, and yeah. you and I could be nominated. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to that, to that prayer. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Unfortunately, we are out of time. Churchill Saoke, Dr. Churchill Saoke, who is a governance expert and also a lecturer at the JQUAT. And we have Alenga Torosted, who is a political analyst and governance expert as well. Thank you, gentlemen, so much for, of course, we should do this again for sure. your time. And thank you, the viewer. I see there are a lot of comments here, but uh, allow me to skip them for now, as we have to give way uh, for Kurunzi Mashinani. Anwangeshi is our sign language interpreter, and Lucy Moura was our earlier sign language interpreter. My name is Ben Troy. Enjoy. Do have yourself a blessed afternoon. <laughs>